After a good night's sleep, I was ready again for mental combat with 9K. I vowed to myself, Larry, stay under control. Don't get tactical. I checked and rechecked my openings, logged on to chessclub.com, and got ready for play. C4 This move, known as the English opening, came as a pleasant surprise to me. I play this opening myself and understand its subtleties and strategies. E5 Knight C3 Knight F6 Knight F3 Knight C6 D4 E takes D4 Knight takes D4 Bishop B4 Bishop G5 H6 Bishop H4 Bishop takes C3 check we are still in theory at this stage of the game. My plan is to saddle 9K with weak isolated doubled C pawns. 9K's plan should be to utilize his bishop pair and space advantage to put pressure on my position. With correct play by both sides, I think the game should be about equal. B takes C3. Knight E5. E3. White should play f4 here with the following ideas in mind. First, if black plays knight takes c4, white answers by e4, attacking that knight and building up a huge center. That gives white a big advantage, a big initiative. Black should, on the other hand, play knight g6 best, which is answered by bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, g3. And now, if black wants to stay out of trouble, he should send his knight on maneuvers with knight f8, intending knight d7 to c5. The game continuation, on the other hand, leads almost to a strategically lost position for white. 9k is burdened with doubled, isolated c-pawns with nothing to show for it. d6 Bishop e2 Knight g6 after the painful experience with pins in the game before, I was happy to break that annoying pin of my knight standing on f6. Bishop takes f6. The retreat, bishop g3, also leads to an easy game for black. Queen takes f6. Castle kingside. Castle kingside. Queen c2, rook e8, rook f d1, knight f8. I logically maneuver the knight to its ideal square, where it influences a good chunk of territory and cannot easily be dislodged. White has very little counterplay here and must somehow manage with those weak, doubled, and isolated c pawns. An added plus in my favor is the point that trades benefit me. If I could reduce it down to a king and pawn endgame, I would win easily. Bishop d3. Knight e6. Knight b3. 9k is now on the defensive, and this move correctly anticipates my intended maneuver of bringing the knight to c5. Rook b8. a4. This does not accomplish much and indicates that 9k lacked a constructive plan at this point. Queen e7. a5. Bishop d7. a6. 9k should have avoided this move because it closes the files on the queen side and shifts all attention to the king side where black enjoys a clear advantage. b6, knight d4, knight c5, knight b5. After the exchange of the knight for bishop, white's position goes from bad to worse. White's bishop does not have much defensive value because its own pawns keep it away from contact with the king side. 
Bishop takes b5. C takes b5. Queen f6. I'm steadily improving my position by dominating the center. 9k has no way to create play on the queen side thanks to the block pawn structure on that side of the board. I will calmly build up my position by first doubling rooks on the e file. Bishop c4. Rook e5. Bishop d5. Rook b e8. Rook d4. Knight e6. Rook d2. G6. I need to set my kingside pawns in motion to apply maximum pressure against 9k's passive position. As a prelude to that plan, it makes sense to first improve the position of my king. Kings can often play a useful supporting role in the middle game. Rook a4. King g7. Rook d1. Rook e7. Rook b4. G5. The pawns are starting to rumble and there's little that 9k can do to ease the pressure. Bishop c6. The alternative, bishop takes e6, rook 7 captures e6, does not help white at all. Queen g6. Queen b2. Trading queens with queen takes g6 check, king captures g6, hardly eases the pressure. I can improve my position at will, while white has almost no prospects of creating counterplay. By keeping queens on the board, I must be alert to a surprise check or unexpected penetration of the white queen. f5. Queen b1. Queen f6. Bishop d5. f4. e4. After bishop takes e6, queen takes e6, I will force a breakthrough on white's e3 point. Now, beside the game continuation knight f8, I had a strong alternative in f3, which cuts off support of the white e-pawn from his comrades and imposes a powerful decisive cramp on white's king position. Knight f8, f3, h5, queen c2, knight g6, queen a2, king h6, queen d2, rook g7, queen d4, g4, f takes g4, knight h4, I was sorely tempted to play h captures g4, but could not find a clear way to make progress after the reply g3, which freezes my knight. So, I went in for another plan to slowly build up pressure against 9k's weak g2 pawn. Rook b2. Rook takes g4. King h1. Knight g6. Rook f2. Queen e7. Queen d2. Rook e g5. Rook a1. h4. c4. I have tightened the vice on the position, but 9k is hung in there, staving off a decisive breakthrough by putting his pieces on their best defensive squares. My main problem was finding a secure square for my king, a problem which I address with my next few moves. Queen e5. Rook c1. King g7. Bishop c6. Queen e7. Rook c f1. Rook e5. Queen c3, king h6, bishop d5, rook e g5, queen b3, 
Queen e5. Rook d1. I built up my position to the maximum extent. I had foreseen the following sacrifice and judged that it had to be winning. I was later severely criticized for playing the sack, but it was a later error that cost me the game. Although a rook is a very heavy investment, I felt that the sudden exposure of white's king and the prospect of obtaining two connected and far advanced pass pawns hurtling down the board just had to be worth a high price. Rook g3. White must accept the sacrifice. If queen b1, I could plant a rook into the heart of white's position with a devastating rook e3. H takes g3. H takes g3. Rook a2. The only alternative was rook f3 when I had in mind rook h5 check, king g1, rook h2, king f1 forced, queen h5, rook d2 again forced, rook h1 check, king e2, Rook g1, and white is in serious difficulties. Rook g4. Sometimes the most obvious continuation is also the strongest. I think black wins here after rook h5 check, king g1, rook h2, excellent move, queen f3, King g5, that's a key move. Now, king f1, knight h4, queen b3, f3, putting more pressure on white's position till it cracks. g takes f3, g2 check, rook takes g2, knight takes g2, and white cannot hold out much longer. King g1. Queen h5, king f1, f3. This appears to be very strong, but 9k managed to find the only defense. At a strong alternative in the pawn grabbing sequence, queen h1 check, king e2, queen captures g2 check, king e1, queen h1 check, king to d2, g2, then white has the shot e5, Queen captures d1 check, forced. Queen takes d1. g1 equals queen, and black has the upper hand. King e1. f2 check. Oh boy, this is not just a blunder, it is a crime. Black is very much in the game after rook f4, king d2, f captures g2, Queen e3, and then king g7, getting the king out of harm's way. King d2. Rook h4. Queen e3, check. 9k starts to take control over important squares on the king's side while also forcing my king to retreat. I was starting to feel that I'd royally botched this game. King g7, rook f1, queen e5, king c2, rook h2, queen f3, queen f4. I was hoping to win the g2 pawn, but this proves to be just a pipe dream. e5. This pawn sack brings the bishop on d5 into the battle for control over g2. I could have resigned now, but decided to punish myself. Sometimes it is very difficult to accept the inevitable. Queen takes f3. Bishop takes f3. Knight takes e5. Bishop d5. Rook h5. Rook a3. Rook g5, king d2, knight g6, rook e3, knight e5, king
King e2. King f6. Rook h1. Knight g6. Rook h7. And here I resigned. A very bitter defeat for me after I had skillfully built up my position to a crushing advantage. After the game, numerous spectators and kibitzers remarked that I had gone nuts with my sacrifice. It was my follow-up to the sack that cost me the battle. I had some solace, at least the battle was entertaining.